Hello to all of you from around the world. I want to welcome you again to another edition of Soul Liberty Today, broadcasting live from our studio right here in the nation's capital, Washington, D.C., here in the United States, and on KMIT 1490 AM radio in Southern California. Uh, my name is Brian Wesley Johnson, and I'm so glad you're here. We have another amazing show for you today. I'm joined today by my wonderful friend and co-host, uh, Teresa Greco, who is also the host of Steps to Happiness, airing every Thursday at 12 p.m. Eastern Time. Hello to you, Teresa. Good morning, Brian, and good morning, everybody. <laughs> Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Um, man, we, again, we have a fantastic show. How was your weekend, Teresa, before we get to that? My weekend was low key, which I like because yeah. I don't. Some weekends you just want it to just be, you know, go around just by what you feel like doing. And I watched yeah. some TV, which I don't usually watch, and had popcorn, which I don't usually eat <laughs> <laughs> while I watch the shows. So it was just nice. Well, what about yours? Yeah. Low key too. Um, uh, we had a friend of ours. Uh, we celebrated a friend of ours' birthday on Friday, which was a load of fun. And then we just kind of chilled around the house, you know. Just you know, I think we both were like, okay, we're really, really busy, and so let's just not do anything, you know. And it was sublime, like perfect, 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 perfect. I have a um, question, Brian. So I yeah, have a question. Go for it. I somebody sent me a video from Washington D.C. that shows that you guys had snow this past weekend, lots and lots oh. of snow, and it says, "Look at the snow in in August. When do we ever have snow in August in Washington?" <laughs> Hey, hey, like, hey. I'm asking Brian they, 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 they about were, this. They were, they were punking everybody then. They, we had no wow. snow. In fact, this weekend was a um, an important weekend. Uh, uh, out on the National Mall, it they were celebrating, and we were celebrating the 60th anniversary of the March on Washington with Martin Luther King. That happened mm -hmm. on Sunday, so it was it was beautiful. It was actually hot here. So we got no snow. So I don't know who that is, but you can tell them that yes. your friend who lives in Washington, D.C. said uh, no. Uh, you know, that's a four letter word around here, too. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking speaking of uh, ridiculously amazing things, let's get to today's show. Um, today is another wonderful motivational Monday where we explore different news stories and issues to get you motivated uh, for the week. Um, Teresa, this is, oh, I got some really, really good stories for you um, that I can't wait to share. Um, you know, last week we covered how wildfires around the world were happening due to man-made climate change. Well, here's how in India they're putting their money where their world is with a huge investment which can really make a difference. Here's more information about it from KION in India. Now, in a groundbreaking a move towards a cleaner and more sustainable future, India has just given the green light to an ambitious plan. The Indian government approved a plan to introduce a fleet of 10,000 electric buses in 169 cities over the next decade. And this initiative comes with a substantial investment of around 7 billion US dollars. As India drives forward with its plans for a fleet of 50,000 electric buses nationwide, a venture estimated at $12 billion, that is, the Indian government's move to earmark funds serves a dual purpose. It's not only accelerating the adoption of electric buses, but also provides stability to bus manufacturers. This dedicated fund safeguards manufacturers cool, from, right? payments, from payment delays, allowing them to actively participate in government contracts and fulfill the vision 
of a greener future. And for more on this, our correspondent Gurshin Galen has sent us this report from New Delhi. Take a look. EVs are cars or other electric vehicles powered by electricity and not fossil fuels. Seeking to enhance green mobility, the Indian cabinet has approved the PM e-bus saver scheme. Under this scheme, at least 10,000 electric buses will be provided to over 169 cities across the country. These electric vehicles will have zero or little tailpipe emissions, but an electric power source may further fuel carbon emissions. Apart from being environment friendly, EVs lead to less noise pollution and are also safe to drive. That means a low gravity center defines these vehicles to be more stable in case of collision. The PM eBus Seva scheme is an initiative of environmental protection and green energy, which are among Prime Minister Narendra Modi's top priorities for Green India. With camera person Gopal Chaudhary, I am Gurshin Galen for Vion. Was this one? So, so cool, right? Um, yes. yes. Uh, 10,000 EV buses in 169 cities across India. I mean, that's basically a, almost a thousand buses per city. Uh, that's going to make a big, big, big difference. Um, um, you know, Teresa, we were talking last week about the wildfires that are happening across the world right now. I mean, uh, uh, we talked about them in Maui, uh, in Washington State, in uh, around in parts of Canada, uh, and in Greece. And then there's even uh, stories that the uh, that the fire season in Portugal is going to be uh, more severe because of man-made climate change. Here's a huge investment uh, that uh, a one of our largest populated countries is making to uh, not only get people moving around in an easier way and in a better way. Uh, because as the story was saying, these are just not EV buses just to be just the EV buses. They're actually modern buses that are also EV powered. They have a lower center of gravity um, so that, you know, th there's less likely that a bus will roll over or, or uh, turn over in, you know, in terms of accidents. Uh, and there'll be, um, you know, climate change, uh, you know, fighters and not running on fossil fuels. What are you, what are you thinking about, all, about this story? No, I think this story is great because if we look at the parts of the world or the countries in those parts of the world that are creating the greatest carbon footprint, like 75%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our countries like India and, and China and yeah. like a lot of those East, Eastern cultures um countries out that way 75 percent right. wow. so and canada as we were saying is is carbon neutral or carbon deficit so we actually don't right. even create any here um right. so i think it's so it's great that they're taking a step to do something about helping mother earth and you know it's funny um that you mentioned that canada is carbon neutral um you know a lot of it has to do with the forest, right? The forest, the, the Canada has a huge forest area, but also you guys just don't take it for granted either, right? I mean, there's, there's, yeah, okay, you know, you have this forest, and and maybe if you didn't do anything, it'd still be carbon neutral. Um, but there's just this connection between people of Canada and and the land that has been there for a long, long, long time. I, I remember even before we were talking about climate change. That when, you know, as a boy growing up from Detroit, I almost kind of like consider like where I grew up in southeastern Michigan, kind of like southern Canada, because <laughs> we were right there. We go over into Canada all the time and my friends would go to Canada all the time and it was always cleaner. They were more um, um, uh, focused on making sure that um, you weren't polluting. And all those kinds of things. And so um, I think that there's a model there that the rest of the world should be um, uh, taking into consideration 
uh, when it comes to all this. So way to go, Canada. You know. <laughs> I'm not going to start singing your, uh, your national anthem, though. <laughs> <laughs> though I do know it. <laughs> but, you know, it's really cool. I mean, um, um, I, you know, when I found this story, I was like, hey, you know, we do need to be talking about uh, some feel-good stories when it comes to, um, you know, Motivational Monday and, and around climate change. Because it can all be, when we talk about this stuff, it can all be like this gloom and doom and, and you know, um, you know, you know, something out of a, out of a movie. Um, and there are things that people are doing around the world, even in these countries, uh, that um, are our greatest polluters uh, of, of carbon emissions, that they're recognizing that, hey, listen, we got to do something about this. So um, uh, way to go, India. Wow, 10,000 EV buses. Um, and I, and I, I don't know what, what, over what period they're going to roll it out. My guess is it's probably going to be over the next decade. Um, um, but if you couple that with, 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 you know, things like solar energy, wind turbines and all that kind of stuff, man, uh, you know, that could make a huge difference in, in, you know, at least stabilizing where we are today, you know, mm -hmm. with climate change. So great story. Great story. And thanks for that. Uh, commentary, Teresa. It's important to recognize that there are countries that are carbon neutral um, um, and are moving toward that um, in the world. So it's not all doom and gloom when it comes to climate change. So th thanks for that. Um, listen, everybody, we're going to take a quick break. We've got even more of Soul Liberty today coming up, including a story about how artificial intelligence is helping people speak again. See you in a few minutes. So Liberty Today is brought to you by Happy Travelers Tours and Old Vine Wine Tours. Satana products at our Go shop at go.soliberty.com. Have you ever asked the question, if I was to be anything, what would I be? Regardless of money, regardless of status, beyond popularity, and fame. Living your passion. Feeling your life has purpose. Solivity is a space to nurture that which lives in all of us. A place where work can become play. And doing what we love creates the dreams of a lifetime. Hey, we're back with more here on Soul Liberty today for a motivational Monday. Um, I'm joined today by my very special uh, co-host, uh, Teresa Greco. Hey, Teresa. Good morning. Um, good morning. Good morning. Um, <laughs> listen, um, there has been an ever-growing debate about the use of artificial intelligence in our daily lives. You know, um, you know, Teresa, is it good? Is it bad? Uh, would it lead to Terminators uh, being built and taking over our world? 
Um, well, our next story should give you and all of our listeners and watchers out there a bit more hope when it comes to the use of use of it in helping a woman speak again after almost two decades. Here's more from WHAS Channel 11 in Kentucky. A story about a medical and technical miracle. A woman unable to speak for nearly two decades has regained that ability thanks to artificial intelligence. Here's ABC's Allison Kasich. For 18 years, Ann Johnson hasn't said one word until now. Great to see you were dead. When she was 30 years old, married with kids, Anne had a paralyzing stroke while playing volleyball, robbing her of an ability to communicate other than using a letter board. Now, artificial intelligence has helped give Anne her voice back. You are truly wonderful people. And for the first time in a long time, she spoke with her husband, Bill. I was thinking about running to the store. What time will you be home? It was an emotional moment to hear her voice again, um, you know, that we used a clip from her wedding video to kind of restore her voice the way it sounded. A team of doctors and researchers at the University of California, San Francisco and UC Berkeley discovered a way to use Anne's brain signals and translate them into words using artificial intelligence. We have electrodes that sit on the surface of Anne's brain. When she tries to move her mouth as if she was saying, a word or a sentence, we decode that activity into sounds and the avatar movements that correspond to the movements that she would have tried to make. Metzger says it's the recent advances in AI that led them to the ability to synthesize speech with the avatar. We decode Anne's brain signals using uh, new AI algorithms and they're essential to being able to do this work. Researchers are now trying to create a wireless version of what you just saw so Anne and others in the future don't have to be physically connected to the computer. Allison Kosick, ABC News, New York. Isn't that cool? Isn't that so oh cool? Oh my goodness, yeah. <laughs> uh, just to repeat uh, what Allison was saying there, according to the University of California researchers, uh, the next step for the team is to create a wireless version of the system that would enable Anne to communicate with it without the implant being physically connected. So she'd be able to kind of walk around and move and that kind of thing, um, and that her hubby can hear what she has to say. Oh. So, no, that's yeah. It, yeah, go ahead. No, so I teach assistive technologies and mm -hmm. those are programs that, that help with reading and writing and, and speech to text software. This right. is a huge advancement for people oh, yeah. who didn't have the capability to do that, that some of the assistive technologies that for people that are nonverbal. So I'm like, wow, like what, a, what an amazing way to be able to use this technology. I mean, um... Um, we just, just maybe not even a decade ago, uh, there was the talk of the, the, the advent or the, uh, innovation of cybernetics, right? Where you have technology connecting in with the human body. Um, and here, here's something that is, it, it, it may look invasive but it's really not it's just feed it's just measuring the brain activity um mm -hmm. and then the wire again the wireless one it won't even have to be physically connected where you won't even see any connection with her um um to help her speak who knows i mean is this going to be uh the next going to lead to the next level of of um uh, you know, apparatus for people who um, have lost limbs, right? Where you're, you're getting information directly from the brain to be able to move arms and legs and, and that kind of thing. I mean, it's, that is just, you know, I, I'm just, I'm just so happy you. that, yeah, it's, it's it, again, yeah, it's, it's like, um, 
here's this woman who, like like others, there's many people that are in the same condition as her, where she's completely cognizant, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like she's, you know, a yeah. vegetable or anything like that. She she hears, she understands, and all that, but she can't speak. She can't mm -hmm. speak the words uh, because of what happened to her in an accident. But that here's here's a new technology that's allowing her to do that. Um, and on the heart and on the heart felt side of that, I can only imagine the the reconnection through language, through spoken word, that her and her husband have now again. Mm -hmm. That's just mm -hmm. you know kind of pulls on your heartstrings a little bit, like. Yeah, you know. because the technology that she was using before that they demonstrated, that's very time consuming. And, and, yeah. and you know, there's limitations to be able to, where you're only maybe speaking in short phrases, right. because, you know, she literally have to type it out. Um, right. Whereas this, and then the fact that it sounds like her too, like I thought that element was yes. also, I said, if you think of like Stephen Hawking and some of the videos of, of him and, and his interviews right that although the voice has gotten a lot better like even with the right. software that i that i train on it's a lot less electronic or robotic mm -hmm. sounding but for it to be able to have grabbed her voice from an, a bit like their wedding video right and then yeah like that even in itself is so cool this, but yeah i mean um that I, her husband was saying that, you know, he can hear her speak, you hear that beautiful voice again. Mm -hmm. And and my guess is that since it's AI, as she speaks more and more and more, the AI is going to learn more and more and more and more about how she speaks and that it will become clearer and even clearer and clearer. Because this is just the first... Mm -hmm. iteration of how it's working right and so at, as the ai and all that kind of measure what's happening in her brain and the phrases and that kind of thing it, it will probably be flawless i i could totally see that in the future Teresa, that she'll have something portable right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that you know you you'll just hear this voice um uh speaking mm -hmm. when she's you know trying to communicate so yeah, great story. I, th I knew you were going to love that one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Up my alley. Ah, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, listen, everybody, we're going to take another quick break. Uh, but when we come back, we'll have even more of Solivity today uh, with a story um, that I think you're going to really love because it's all about second chances and how those second chances can impact one person as well as a whole community. So we'll take a quick break and we'll be back. Six years ago when I started So Liberty, my vision was to support everyone in improving their life through the discovery of their passion and purpose so they could become the best version of themselves to battle fear and ignorance and create a better world today. Get inspired to live your passion and purpose. Visit Solivity.com now. Do you see me kneeling on this dual roller called Parasetter? It's actually comfortable because of this channel and the softness of the special foam. It feels like my kneecaps are being massaged. When I lie down, my spine is housed in this channel while the convex rollers massage my muscles. They let go and lengthen. There's a traction effect from my head on the headrest and my mid back from the rib wrap, which hugs me. When I start the breathing sequence, I feel calm because my cortisol levels are dropping. Lower cortisol means bye-bye constant hunger. Parasetter is 40 inches long and much more comfortable than old style rollers, but it weighs only 10 ounces. Parasetter, just like Pilates was, is no longer an insider secret. Do yourself a favor, 
Reset your parasympathetic nervous system. Defeat stress. Lying, sitting, kneeling, or standing. This unique patented roller helps everyone. And hello there. We're back with more of Soul Liberty today uh, on a Motivational Monday. Now, Teresa, you've probably heard the old saying, everyone deserves a second chance, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, this next story, well, this next story you're going to absolutely love. Um, not only did Sarah Gad give herself a second chance at living after a life of pain and heartache, but she also decided that her new life would be dedicated to helping others, too. Here's more from Fox 9 in Minneapolis, St. Paul. Tonight, the story of a life that could have been defined by drug addiction and prison. But instead, Sarah Gad chose to give herself a chance and go to law school. And now in her new life, she is helping others to find their own success. Fox 9's Karen Scullin shares Sarah's story. Murder charges dropped, and Benjamin Richardson walked out of the Hennepin County Jail a free man. It's a victory for him, but also for his attorney. It was her first murder case. The judge said, I'm convinced that, you know, he didn't do this. There's no case against him. Gad had fought the case in court for six months, trying to get the judge and prosecutors to look at the lack of evidence. But Gad knows how to battle. She's had to make quite the comeback herself after fighting an opioid addiction since a car accident in 2012 and I'm not a very good criminal because I got caught really really fast and once I had been charged and pleaded guilty to my first felony I couldn't even process it <laughs> I was in medical school you know at a top 15 institution and suddenly I'm a convicted felon with a drug problem. Between 2012 and 2015, seven nonviolent felony drug convictions. In and out of jail in Pennsylvania and Hennepin County here in Minnesota. But then during a trip to Chicago, she landed in the Cook County Jail. She says that was 27 days of hell. I was beaten, I was stabbed, I was raped and thrown in solitary confinement when my family started making noise and reaching out to people. And Kathleen Zellner was interested in my case because I think she's had a lot of negative experiences with the Cook County Jail and just how they treat people. So she took the case. This is critical. There's an abundance of evidence. This could flip the whole case. This Kathleen case Zellner, the attorney made it famous by Netflix for the documentary Making a Murderer. As Gad continued to struggle with addiction, she says Zellner didn't give up on her and invited her to help at the law firm. Gad thought it could be her best chance at a new life. And I found the work to be very rewarding. Um, I have had the privilege of being able to be present when a person that I had helped prove they were wrongfully convicted of murder, I was able to be at the prison and be with him as he took his first steps out to freedom, hugging his family. She was talking about Mario Cacharo, convicted of murder, only to be freed after the witness recanted. A case and a moment that inspired Gad to go to law school. She was accepted to the prestigious University of Chicago Law School. But there was one more hurdle. She had to face a Hennepin County judge. That judge could have sent her to prison. There's a mandatory minimum for re repeat drug offenders, and she is a serial recidivist who cannot be rehabilitated. But the judge was like, well, she did say she got into law school, like, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt, started law school with an ankle monitor. <laughs> Gad graduated from law school in 2020, got her license to practice in August of 2022. Her experience with the criminal justice system, the courts, the jails, and of course, addiction have brought her to this point. The day Richardson's case was dropped, Gad ran into a judge she knew from her old life. We always talk about re repeat offenders, not, yep. none of the good stories about yep. people who succeed. Yeah, it was crazy running into Judge Barnett, who was the judge who presided over my drug convictions. And he was like, what are you doing out here? And I was like, oh, yeah, I just, you know, <laughs> I'm out here working now. Gad has handled 21 cases in a year. 
none have gone to trial. A lot has happened in my life, and I'm just grateful to be on this side of it. Attorney Kathleen Zellner sent us a statement that says, in part, I recognized her enormous potential for making a real contribution to society, and I tried to influence her in that direction. She has transformed herself from a criminal defendant into a champion for the legally oppressed. All she needed was a second chance. By the way, Gad says she paid for law school from the settlement she got from Cook County. Karen Scullin, Fox 9. <sighs> wow, wow, wow. What a great story. You know, yeah, you know, um, when I saw this story, I was thinking about how uh, I would see my folks in practice, in their practice, uh, Teresa, talk about um, people creating a new normal for themselves. Mm -hmm. And that um you know you have a quote unquote normal that you could keep following it's based upon a lot of negative things and and that kind of thing um but that you can but that you can always choose differently always and that here's a story of of someone i'm sure if that if if uh if Sarah Gad was here, she'd probably tell you that it probably wasn't just a second chance. It's probably a third, a fourth, a fifth, or sixth chance where she had to make over time different decisions about her life. And, and so it's never, ever, ever too late to create a better life for yourself through the decisions that you make. You know, kind of like that that saying from my grandparents, you know, if you know when you know better, you do better. So mm -hmm. she started making these decisions based upon knowing better that, listen, I don't have to do this. I don't have to live my life this way. I can choose to to uh, live my life in, in a better way. I want to get some feedback from you before we uh, go to break. So what do you think? What, what were you thinking, Teresa? I thought it was unfortunate what got her in that situation in the first place, right? Yeah. The opioid addiction, that those medications, they yeah. now know, right? That at first the doctors were prescribing them and because they were being told from the pharmaceutical company that it was fine and these people, mm -hmm. people could be on these medications for long periods and not develop addictions to them and now they know that you know after three days already your body starts to, to start craving these substances Absolutely. and that as she said she was in medical school like top 15 yeah. and then you know i think it was an accident that you know re resulted in her taking those and then mm -hmm. those ruined her life right. and got her into you know a whole a whole bunch of situations that in a way, we're kind of outside of her control because of her addiction. Now that Absolutely. was caused because of a medical thing. So right. it's it's amazing that she was able, as you said, to make those right choices that even though the world tries to beat us down, Brian, it, and not everybody is in our corner, right. but that she right. was that she was able to make the right choices for herself, despite how hard it was people were making it hard for her so yeah i was even i was well enough during this because oh. it's a beautiful story and how she's using all of that experience now that and you know i i work with a lot of trauma coaches and they've gone through a lot of stuff like a, yeah. a lot of crap and i'm like yeah. i don't know like if it was me i don't know if i i could be standing and they will say that they would not change a single thing because it let them to the life that they're living and that's exactly you know what's happened to her that all of her experiences led her to do the work that she's doing today with with so much passion and purpose because Absolutely. she's lived it right right and she's and and Love i think another i think another important uh a component of all this is is that um she's paying it forward right she 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 found something that she's really dedicated to and she's using it to serve right this isn't just about money for her this is about serving the community 
that is going through many of the same things that she went through. So thank you for that, Teresa. Thank you for that. Um, listen, well, everyone, we're going to take another short break, uh, but, we, but we'll be back with more on Solivity today, including our last story about how you can find love any and everywhere. You just have to be open to receive it. We'll be right back. So Liberty Today is brought to you by Assume Control Over Your Weight and Broader Health with the 80 Bytes Program by Physical Mind Institute. For 50 years, we've been told, load up your plate with veggies. Load them up. Because all this spinach, look at it. All the spinach is only 100 calories. But avoid fat because a tiny sliver of butter is also 100 calories. So spinach is good, butter is bad, right? But not today. Now we're told, put butter on everything, even in your coffee. Why? Because fat doesn't spike insulin as carbs do. And stretching the stomach with all those veggies unbalances our digestive hormones. So eat healthy today means fat, fasting, stomach control, right here is the stomach. Forget calories, hormones rule, and 80 bites is the solution. Are you ready to take that first step towards true, unwavering inner happiness? Are you like thousands of people who have everything they need, not want, but need, and still can't seem to find happiness and fulfillment in their lives? If so, the Steps to Happiness show is for you. On my show, you will learn about the principles and practices that lead to true inner happiness. Because guess what? isn't found in our external environment, but within ourselves instead. Together with my guests, we will explore the latest physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being practices. And together, we'll advise you on the actionable steps you can take towards a happier, more fulfilled, authentic life. So I invite you to join me each week on Soul Liberty TV on the Steps to Happiness show with me, Teresa Greco. Well, we're back with more of So Liberty Today. Listen, um, our last story is one that comes from uh, WBRD News out of Louisville, Kentucky, um, where we learn a valuable lesson in giving and receiving love. You know, it is so good, Teresa, I had to share. So enjoy. When one door closes, another one opens. The old adage is real life for an 86-year-old Walmart greeter in Carrollton, Kentucky. She has seen some of the toughest life has to offer and came out on the other side smiling. Here's today's WDRB Positive. Thanks for coming to Walmart. We often walk out of a Walmart carrying a lot. And it's not just the stuff we put in a cart and then a plastic bag. So many things are going on that hurt people. Welcome to Walmart. In a blue hat with a sparkly pocket and colorful clogs. Thanks for coming into Walmart. You're awesome. You can catch her going in and then you can catch her going out. <laughs> Mary Ruth Robinson. Nice to see you all. You know, I'm 86 years old. <laughs> Thanks for coming into Walmart. Hopes to be the reason you forget about what's bothering you. You don't find someone like her every day anymore. <laughs> You're so cute. She just always smiling and... Hey, how are you? How are you? I'm so glad you came in. And she she instantly lifts my spirits. Oh, she don't meet a stranger. We get to know each other. <gasps> oh, no. my heart, be still. <laughs> hey, thank you for coming in. I love your hat. The Carrollton Walmart greeter may check receipts oh, you are so thoughtful. and return baskets. Oh, my goodness. Welcome to Walmart, sir. But her real job? Try to make them feel happy no matter what is going on in their life. Everything she knew about hers changed not long ago. 
But uh, I can't hardly talk about it. Her husband, Jackie. I wish everybody could have that kind of love. Died after a long, grueling bout with Parkinson's. He was bedridden for five years. He died on her anniversary. So too would a lot of the life she knew for more than 60 years. And I thought, well, if I don't go to work, I will die of loneliness because I miss him. Slipping on the blue vest and clipping a name tag to it helped. My independence is very important to me. It was nice to see you. Oh. Some of the love she's now missing at home. <laughs> so cute. She's getting at work. Yeah, oh yeah. For me? There are flowers. You are so precious. And many hugs. Beautiful day. You're so sweet. Some that mean just as much to the person giving them as the kind greeter getting them. You always make my day because I find myself remembering your face. The mother let him pass ahead and she turned around and she said, you know what? You mean the world to my son. She goes, you don't know it, but my son is autistic and he wouldn't hug anyone, but you are so special to him. So if she can give that, then she feels fulfilled. One, two, three. Working is a beautiful thing. It's beautiful therapy. And I need the money. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming in. Y'all are precious. Trading in a low place in life for laughs at the home of low prices. I have never met sweeter people. Thank you for coming to Walmart. <laughs> and in no doubt, making the love of her life proud. She's just wonderful. Welcome to Walmart and have a wonderful day. In Carrollton with photojournalist Dominic Furman, Chris Suter, WDRB News. Mary Ruth is the sweetest. She says her goal is to become the oldest living Walmart employee. And I have no doubt that that is going to happen for her. Oh, man, I, I was starting to get a little teary-eyed, Teresa. No, it's already happening here. I already have my oh. Kleenex. <laughs> that was such a tearjerker. <laughs> oh, my God. I was getting sucked in. As soon as they started showing the pictures of her and her husband, I'm like, oh, this, that just yeah. took it to, like, another level. He, he transitioned on their anniversary right on their anniversary and so um again i you know in terms of giving and receiving love right she mm -hmm. she took that feeling of of that energy of feeling alone and was like no i'm going to go back to work i'm going to do something that where i can give uh and became a greeter and and she is the greeter's greeter in Carrollton, Kentucky. I've, I actually know where Carrollton is. I've actually gone through Carrollton uh, as a kid uh, to our, our family reunions down in Bowling Green. And um, um, I will, if, if we ever do that again in, in modern times, I'm going to hopefully see her and tell her thank you for doing this work because uh, you can just see it. I mean, the, 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 the one that got me was when the mother said about her son is autistic uh -huh. and that just doesn't like to be touched at all and uh -huh. that he trusts her and has a connection with her so much that she was like, yes, I want that. I want that love. I, 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 he, he, she knows how to connect with me at a soul level. And I was like, oh, oh, man. Oh. I loved but, watching everyone's smiling face either coming yeah. in or going out just yeah. to see everyone it was so nice to see everybody <laughs> smiling right because even right. that oh. you don't see that and so right. i mean you could see she looks so adorable and she's doing like 80 i think it was 86 88 oh 88 like look how amazing she is at 88 she's she's spry she's smiling she's energetic she's having yeah. a great time um, again, I have no doubt that, that she will become Walmart's oldest employee. Uh, um, um, and, and my guess is she's going to do it until she can't do it anymore because yeah, that's yeah. what you should do. If you find something that you absolutely love and adore and that you want to give this 
and give this gift away, give it away, give it away. Listen, everybody, listen. Um, we're going to take a short break. Uh, we'll be back with more Soul Liberty today in just a few Hi there, Sheila Applegate here with some exciting news. I've joined the incredible Soul Liberty team as the host of the new Consciously Awesome live show, where I will be sharing insights to help you discover your full brilliance and claim the vibrant life you deserve. So tune in every Wednesday right here on Soul Liberty TV to join the fun and remember to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss a single episode. Have an awesome week and I will see you on Wednesday. Would you like to be one of the first people to experience mental freedom? Mental freedom is a coaching practice with six core principles, improving hope, self-efficacy, optimism, resilience, and general well-being. Mental freedom only takes six sessions. It is designed to give you the tools you need to help yourself. It can help with any situation, relationship problems, past trauma, career decisions, parenting challenges, addiction, and mental health concerns. Incorporating the mental freedom framework into your life will deliver an approach to master any situation and a pathway toward achieving inner peace. Mental freedom provides the information and tools that you need to grow and be bigger than anything that ever happens to you. So if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one or a group coaching program that will allow you to address any situation that comes up in your life with practical tools to give you you more peace and joy, then join the Mental Freedom Program in Soul Liberty's Aspire Academy. There are very limited spots available, so don't delay. I hope to see you there. Hey, we're back with more of Soul Liberty today. Uh, wow, Teresa, man, what, what a great show today. That last one really got me, uh, <laughs> I just had, had to take a break myself, like, woo, 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 woo. <laughs> um, let's get to some shameless plugs. Um, we are just playing um, the commercial about um, this fabulous program that you have going on called Six Weeks to Mental Freedom. Can you give people just a little bit more information about it? Yes, this program, which is being offered at an incredible price. Um, so I, I will share that at the end. But basically, in six weeks, you will have all the tools you need to be able to tackle anything that comes up. So whether it's stuff that's looming from the past, perhaps, that you need help um, processing and working through, or day-to-day -day stuff comes up all the time that can rob us of mental freedom because we just keep thinking about our problems over and over and over again. And in six weeks, you will be given the tools that will help you to deal with anything. And in the commercial, you know, really the full gamut of of situations, whether professionally or, per or personally, um, and so I invite you to take a look. I see Brian, he's, he's showing it to you. So right now for the second cohort, it's being mm -hmm. offered um, for only 333 for those six weeks. And so as uh, the program was designed, it is to give you tools for you to help yourself. That's what I love about this program where it's you're not relying on any, you know, maybe weekly sessions with, um, with, a, with a practitioner that with the, these tools, you're able to help yourself. Absolutely. And we put the link to uh, Six Weeks of Mental Freedom in our chat. So go check it out um, um, at solivity.com. Thanks for that, Teresa. Um, listen, speaking of solivity.com, uh, did you know that you can actually watch or listen to all of our Solivity Today shows? Yep, if you go to Solivity Today uh, at solivity.com forward slash Solivity to, uh, dash today, you can uh, watch or listen to all of our shows 
uh, by clicking the links below. Um, so just, you know, really cool stuff that's, that's, that's there that's, that's really cool. Um, also, um, maybe while you're there, um, follow us on social media. Uh, we're on all the major platforms. Um, and don't forget to uh, sign up for our mailing list or subscribe uh, so that you can get latest alerts on stories and content and, and all of that. Um, also, just want to remind you that if when you go to our Solivity Soul site, uh, Soul, <laughs> Solivity.com, Solivity Today show site, uh, check out our partners, uh, you know, 80 Bytes by Physical Mind Institute, uh, as well as Old Vine Wine Tours. Uh, they are amazing. They're amazing people. You'd love to know more about their products and services. Um, wow, Teresa, it, it, it always ends too quickly. Always ends too quickly. Um, um, you know, thank you for being here. I appreciate you and all that you bring to solivity.com. Another great uh, Steps to Happiness show coming up on Thursday. So make sure that you check out Teresa and her guest that's coming up then. Um, wow, well, we've got a little bit of time left. I just want to say thank you to you for joining us for another Motivational Monday. This is how we do it every Monday. At the beginning of the week, um, we start out and get you, you know, energized and inspired to, uh, you know, close out the rest of the week with some passion, some purpose, uh, some high quality living. Um, listen, on behalf of all of us, thanks again for joining us. You can catch us every weekday right here on Solivity TV at 8 a.m. Eastern. Or if you live out west on the West Coast, you can uh, listen to us or watch us at KMIT 1490 AM radio at 8 AM Pacific time. Um, we're there every day, Monday through Friday as well. Uh, you know, thank you, KMIT, for being our partner. We're loving every minute of it. And we're loving all the listeners out there as well. Um, listen, until next time, as always, from all of us here at soliberty.com, you know, you know, Live your, live your life with passion and purpose. You can learn more about it by going to solivity.com today and get those skills and awarenesses so you can create your best life, your best life of, of good living of, and thriving today. We'll see you next time.